Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We got a fine Monday afternoon show today uh, with one of my Cheetos. Um, I can say Cheetos. I didn't. I didn't tell you this before you came on, Tucker. Uh, we got Tucker Max here, uh, one of the most famous writers, maybe of all time. It's him and Jesus. <laughs> yes. Thanks, guys. Right. Well, him. I, so here's what I got. Here's my top three. Okay. I got Tucker Max. I got Jesus, obviously, and then I got. <laughs> And Frank at three. <laughs> well, Jesus didn't actually write anything down. <laughs> right. Right. He didn't, actually. So far as we know. But it was translated, right? So he had a good... No, no, no. Jesus had a ghostwriter. Uh, he had <laughs> he some, did. He, he did, did yeah. yeah. He had 12 totally straight dudes that followed him around in the desert. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> which is what Kevin Spacey used to do in yeah, Hollywood. So, yeah, you know, well, just 12. He had a gang of 12 that were that all was, real questions. I think that was actually the age limit. I don't know what the... <laughs> we can't get sued for that because that he, good one. he well got done. released or something. Uh, He's fine. Yeah. Yeah, he's fine. No, everybody died. So all those people that were suing him for getting touched, they, they've all tragically no. died. Oh, swear Seriously? to God. Well, uh, that's Bob, not like Bob, a QAnon thing. No, 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 no. Bob, look it up. So uh, three, three cases have already been tossed, and right. it's been strange people like around the world where yeah, yeah, yeah. one guy died in Italy. I forget where the other one died, like uh, England, um, but all in like... Crazy wow. mishaps, yeah. Who so, would knew Kevin Spacey is a stone killer as well as a homosexual? I mean, yeah. look, it's in the no, show. Well, he was definitely gay. I don't think anybody questioned that <laughs> well, so much. No, no, no. <laughs> the killer it part. It wasn't though. the gay part. It was yeah. the, uh, well, the, uh, the rape part also. Yeah. Well, the yeah. Under, Francis Underwood pushing that, uh, that ginger lady in front of the train, right? <laughs> yep. That, was, that seemed in character for him. Yeah, that yeah. seemed in character. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I, what's going on now. I feel like he could... I, he could have remake. Uh, what's that fucking movie with uh, uh, the guy just goes into road rage? It's like a famous. Movie. Oh, oh yes, uh, Michael Douglas falling yeah, down. Yeah. Falling down. Yeah, yeah. big yeah, fan yeah. of falling. I, down. I feel like I could really believe Kevin Spacey as a falling down guy because of what we know now about human psychology and aggression. Mm -hmm. People look at a big athletic dude and think that dude's probably gonna fuck me up. And then you meet him, and it's like Jason Momoa or one of these people. Right. Like they're super nice, they're, yeah. They're, because they don't have to be dicks. But you see yeah. these little wormy, sniveling cunts like yes. that. Yes. Those are the guys you need to watch out. You for. gotta, Tucker. You gotta watch out for the skinny guys with big dicks, like those fucking rednecks, where you're just like, "Yo, dude." He weighs like one fifteen, has a fucking hog on him, and you're like, "That's the guy you want to be worried about." Where are you looking at redneck dicks? I don't understand. Oh, I'm from Georgia. It's redneck dicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's from South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from, yeah, I'm from, from North Kentucky. Carolina. I'm oh, yeah. not, I'm, you went to school. So when you were, you were doing like phys ed and all that other stuff, you never saw like a real skinny kid with like a huge dick where you're just like, Jesus Christ, man. So I'm 45. How old are you? Uh, a couple summers younger than you. Okay. Nope. So, yeah. but I feel, at least in my schools I went to in Kentucky, we were past the showering together stage. Like no dude showered together. Oh. Well, unless you're like, that was a legend that I heard. From we were not. Older. Yeah. Unless yeah. it's like your uncle, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, then a it's, different, that's a different. That's a different showering. For real. And, well, he went yeah, to Penn yeah, State. I, I did. Uh, well, of he course, did. Obviously. Yeah. 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 Did you actually? Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's where I learned most of my <laughs> stuff. Yeah, there you go. It is. Yeah. Because that joke would have been too easy, but no, he actually went there. So yeah, we were showering and like, man, we talked about this. I forget who was on a couple weeks ago, but um. Uh, they're always fucked up. They're always yeah. weird. And then yeah. something weird happens to them. Homeboy that I knew, yeah. like from my school, this skinny right. kid with a big dick, um, drove his car like 140 into a tree, but it was off a, a hill. So On like, purpose? No. I was totally asking. He was fucked up. You say it like it's fucking stupid, but Street Bike Tommy got on Nitro Circus by doing exactly that. 100%. On purpose. 100%. But it's where he in his died in driver. the tree. It was above 12 feet where yeah. you were just like, what? So he hit a hill and then uh, just kept going. Yeah. Um, RIP, but they had to bury that dick in a separate box. I mean, it was, it was well, the tragic. Dick, the dick actually received a full military funeral as well. <laughs> <laughs> Lined up before all the girls nice, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Taps. Yeah. The girls all They the played taps salutes. and they presented a flag to his doctor who had cut off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Speaking thing. of military, um, I hope they serve beer in hell changed a lot of us. Um, for me personally, I thought after I read that, that I could then go on and write books. I know you've heard this all the time, mm -hmm. but since we had shared the same agent we were chatting about before we got online, mm -hmm. what I had heard was that the military actually played a huge role in getting that book yeah, out and, and, and really helping it explode. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, dude, I've heard this. It's so funny. I sold a lot of books, but every military person I meet, it's like, oh, dude, your book's amazing. My whole ship read a copy. And I'm like, how many, how many people? Oh, 600 people. I'm like, mm -hmm. y'all couldn't have bought two or three copies? Like, you want. And so it's like, I don't, whatever millions I've sold, 
there's got to be five or ten million more who've read the books because the military dudes, and bless their hearts, they deserve it, but they're so cheap and so yeah. poor. Well, if you're on a boat, then you don't really have access to that I guess stuff. The, yeah. I get it. It's, yeah. I, I forgive them. It's no big deal. But, but the but, other part I think you're forgetting is when you're on a boat yeah. like that, yeah. you got you nothing else to do. And you, right. you've no, you're not right. spending your money it's anywhere. Not like the commissary has 20 copies. Yeah. So right. No, I get it. No, of but, <laughs> but they are. It's not that they're cheap necessarily. It's that they've married a stripper right. and they have a new Camaro at 30 APR. Well, they, <laughs> they got bills to pay, bitch. <laughs> Damn. They got that raptor to pay for, dog. Right. Fucking stupid. <laughs> I wish that was, you know, some, some uh, tropes, some memes, some stereotypes are like kind of true, but just you, you play on them because it's funny. Yeah. That one is fucking true. Yeah. It's uh, real. It's fucking so stupid. Yeah, the raptor, dude. They, they'll go and get the raptors. Yeah. Every contractor will come home and spend all their money on a raptor. Yeah. yeah. Matt, Matt, Matt was the one who told me that. He goes, yeah, dude, wait. Every contractor you meet is going to have a brand new raptor. And I was like, why? And he goes, well, you're making all this money. I've done what it's spending on. You yeah. come home, you buy one fucking thing, and then you go back. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, who cares? Yeah. Um, but with that book in particular, uh, it didn't do well for a couple years, and then all of a sudden exploded. Yeah. Um, did that help you financially because you, you didn't take some huge advance on something like I always wondered how that worked out because it's such a rare case like um, 50 shades of gray was similar. Or, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was like, dude, when I wrote that book, when I first started writing it, I was so poor, I couldn't afford protein. Like I literally had to date girls who North were, Korean. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I was except I was in America. Yeah, like yeah. there was protein, I just couldn't afford it. I see. And so like I had to date girls who were like uh, uh, who would bring me like ribs for dinner, like uh, you know either heavy girls or uh, girls who were not attractive, and that's all, the only way they could get with me, or girls that just liked to bring me food because I honestly couldn't afford protein. And so the book came out. It did okay at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But right, it wasn't a huge runaway hit. And then it was all word of mouth, dude. And so it didn't really make a difference. The only way it made a difference is my publisher was willing to give me a better deal uh, than the normal, whatever, 7.5%. I think they bumped that up to 10 yep. because I was willing to do a bunch of promotion stuff. And it wasn't selling. So like, oh, whatever. Let's give them a little bit more money, see if it works. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up making a little bit more money than most authors. But not like, not like I'm fr flying private or some shit off of that. Like, sure. Right. But I, I didn't know because, I mean, again, it sold so many fucking copies that you wonder that jump. You were also one of the first guys that I can re remember reading your own audiobook. Yeah. And, and that's a big deal, right? And I don't know who you had to fight for that or no, if you did No, they actually it, paid me. Though they did. Yeah, they paid me five grand to do that. That's the only reason I did it. No shit. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, yeah, And I actually learned an incredible lesson, too. Uh, I, you know, my first book, I, uh, this is kind of a book nerd thing. I, you know, I edited a thousand times. I thought, okay, this is the best I can do. And then I read it. And mm -hmm. I heard like 50 things. Where I'm like, oh, God, if I had just read it out loud, you know, small things. And so, like, now when I uh, publish something, I always read my book out loud uh, before I put it out. And because it, it's like, it's the best way to edit. Because as soon as you say it out loud, you're like, oh, no, that looks good on the page, but it sounds terrible. If it sounds good, it's going to read good. Yes. Yeah. And I, I do the exact same things. That's why I'm smiling is because yeah. Dan did the last audio Alta book with me. told us the same thing, too. Uh -huh. He learned it from me. Yeah. He reads. No, he 100% learned that. He'll did tell he really? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I swear to God. Okay. He'll tell you that. That makes sense. Because yeah. he, he said that. He said, like. I'll write whatever I write, but then I read it how it, how I want to read it, and then we go back and fix the book yeah, afterwards. Because yeah, yeah. I'll cast actors in it, and then so we'll all do it. And you right. know, I've had like one out a year and everything else, yeah, right? right? Um, that romance novel. Yeah, yeah, right. For dudes. Well, you've got a great voice. Took you should off. Be reading. Yes, but I had to fight the publishers on that. They wanted the British guy. Yeah, most publishers are stupid. They're fucking idiots, right? right. So, but when when Dan was in there, there was a couple times where you had said to me, you were like, "Hey, dude." I don't understand why you don't like this one sentence. And I was like, it's the same thing. I was like, well, I want to hear it, it out loud. It doesn't sound right. Right. And I had repeat jokes in different chapters yeah. where maybe it fit better in that one chapter than it did here. And you want to hear it out loud. And so then I would go back and edit it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's hard for people to understand. Yeah. But, um, you know, the reason why it's fascinating to our audience is this is probably the number one question of either how do you, how do you start a company with like a Black Rifle coffee? Because our right. co-host owns Black Rifle. It, right. Or... I want to write a book or right. a screenplay. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I mean, we get books all the time. Uh, go to there too real quick and I'll, I'll pick up the, the book that was just sent in. Which one is it? Uh, this is go. no tougher duty, no greater honor. Uh, but people send in books oh. all the time, right? Oh. Um, terrible cover. Yeah, well, the cover's bad. Look, 
Uh, people no, it might be an amazing the book. Is, the covers. The book is. Yeah, yes, but yeah. people send it in all the time. Yeah. That's why. I mean, that's why. Like, dude, everybody has a dream of writing a book. I started a company to help people because it's the endless question I yes. got. When people find out that you wrote a book, uh, two questions. First, they'll politely ask you what it's about. And they don't fucking listen. They don't care. The next question is what they care about. How, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. I want to do it. Exactly right. And so I just started a company and just started helping people. And now... It's huge, and someone else. Tell everybody it. about your company, because I'm going to give you some shine here. Um, yeah. I've had two people actually use it. Um, uh, I'll tell you in a second. Okay. It's, a, it's everybody. Your company. It's just basically, it's kind of like a ghostwriting company. Uh, but it's it, anyone who wants to write, publish, market a book, we help them do it, right? So we have like free courses, and then we have like a book coaching thing. We'll coach you through it, and then we'll have like a ghostwriting thing where we'll interview you and get the book out of you. We publish it. We do the marketing. So like we've done David Goggins' book, which is Can't Hurt Me, which is mm -hmm. huge. Um, Tiffany Haddish, Dan Sullivan. We've done a bunch of those like kind of well-known people. I think we've done almost a thousand books now, and we got a bunch in process. And it's like three three hundred person company. It's pretty big. What's the name of the company? Scribe Media. Okay, Scribe yeah, Media. I should probably say the fucking. Yeah, I was going to say so that way people can go. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to tee up here. People Tucker. always asking me yeah. marketing <laughs> questions, and I'm like, oh, I should mention the name of the company. Yeah. So ScribeMedia.com is where they can find it. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, ironically, I've had two different people at different points in my life say, hey. I used that. I used his his service, and it yeah. was amazing. Who? Um, one is our liquor attorney, uh, Rachel Schaefer. Oh, um, I know Rachel. Yes. in Nashville. Yes, she's we're, great. We're meeting with her this weekend. She's amazing. We have a hard seltzer coming out this fall, and she did all the deals for that. Um, yeah. She's phenomenal, and great. she goes. She didn't know anything about what we did, by the way. She yeah. just knows liquor and everything, yeah. and she goes. Hey man, as we're starting to get deeper and deeper in this, like it's all like your Instagrams with like a bunch of famous people. Like, what do you do? I was like, well, we have this podcast or whatever. And she was like, oh my God. She goes, you ever have Tucker Max on? And I was like, oddly enough, I think he's coming on in like two weeks. Right, and I live in Austin. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, I'll, I'll give her a shout out. She goes, it was great. The service was fucking great. She goes, if you could just tell him that for me, it'd be great. Because I don't even know, because you guys have so many books. Yeah. She goes, I don't know if it actually gets to him or not. I I'm totally like, remember her. Yes, yeah. so I'll, I'll give her a shout out. And then another uh, buddy of ours, Josh Harkis. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yes, did a marketing book yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. Same thing, great experience, yeah. lights out, everything else. And uh, I don't really get any credit, honestly. We, we, amazing people work at the company. We have a different guy, mm -hmm. Javon McCormick, who runs it. He's like in this incredible, inspirational story, CEO. Other, like I'm honestly just kind of the clown they dangle out front as sort of like the authority. And then I spend 10% of my time on it. They're all... They kick ass on it, truly. Yeah. I wish I could take the credit. I, and look, you must be knocking it out of the park because like, these are two close friends who they are, are like, they, they are. wouldn't lie. You right. know? No, no, no. Like, hey. It's the whole team there. Like, I'll take the credit for the cool shit I do. I mainly just got this started with my co-founder and then we found better people and they've really done, they've done all of it. That's know? awesome. Yeah, because again, there is so many people out there trying to write a book, but it's fucking hard, dude. And if you don't know, like my, my background was screenplays. So right. moving into this was yeah. kind of easy for me where I was like, all right, I know what the plots and yeah. you know, all that other shit should be. Um, but most people are just sitting at home going, man, I got a great story yeah. about my life and I do this and, yeah, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And you're like, all right, do you? <laughs> and when you sit down with them and you go through their life, like, cause I'll, there's, there's very, like, I'll entertain it and I'll, I'll yeah. talk to people and I'm like, great. What's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you? You know? And they'll be yeah. like, Man, I bought this uh, jar of mayonnaise <laughs> once, and I, you're like, I got a used Camaro, and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you're like, well, eh, maybe so, not ready for a book. Dude, I'll, I'll tell you what's funny about that, though. Everyone, not everyone, a lot of people would come to me like, I have a crazy, my life, or this or that. And some of them did, right? Mm -hmm. Most of them did not. And so th the problem was that they were trying to be me, right? Yes. Or trying to be who they perceived me to be. Right. And then what I would start doing with most of these people is I just start asking them questions about their life, right? And so some dude who's like, yeah, I got drunk once in Mexico. And like, that's my book, right? His book up, like, that was like mine was a disaster. But then I start talking to him and ask questions. And it's like, oh, it turns out like his dad abandoned him and his mom was a hooker. And like he has this insane, actual, incredible life. Yeah, not what you did, right. but why you arrived there and then what you did after is what Correct, you Correct, yeah. About. Almost everyone has an incredible story. It's yeah. almost never the story they think it is. Right. It's the story, where's the painful place in your life you don't want to go 
That's the story, right? Yeah. right? And so, like, uh, I can't tell you how many times, like, someone would start off thinking they have a cool book, and then they're in tears, and like, oh, my God. And I, I don't mean in a bad way. I mean, yeah. like, that's an incredible inspirational story. That would be amazing. Uh, why don't you tell that story? And like, oh, I could never. And I'm like, okay, well, that's the story. You have. Yeah, why would you yeah. want a bunch of trumped-up fluff to be your autobiography in the first place? That doesn't help anybody, and it certainly doesn't help you. No. And it's not going to sell either. Nobody gives a fuck about that shit. And yep. whenever you're doing biographies and stuff, like, you, you ask these questions, and then, you know, like, like with Matt, for example, he's like, oh, man, I really don't want to talk about that. I was like, yeah, you, you have to. I have to. It's your life because yeah. this, this is how bad it is. I was talking to Dr. Frank the other yeah. night, and, uh, and he was like, how do you even go? And I was like, all right, well, tell me why you decided to do this from the beginning when you were fucking poor. Yeah. And he goes, oh, well, shit. And then crazy story. You know, yeah. you're like, yeah. there there's you a, go. There's a really specific story about him leaving, uh, being a neurosurgeon, mm -hmm. right? to doing what he does now, and it's a fucked up story. Yes. But that's the story. Exactly. Right? And that's the story you have to tell, yeah. and it's getting these stories out of people, yeah. and that's what your company does great yeah. at, because it's people just don't understand. They were yeah. like, okay. Yeah. And then other people, like you said, have versions of their life that they wish like they were you, yeah. and especially with I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell, it was one of those things where I just think it was simple. You were the first one to talk about it, but yeah, there's a lot of dudes out there fucking girls and they have crazy stories. Right. Then they all thought they could be you afterwards and be like, well, I can write a book like Tucker and fucking sell that. Well, you know what's funny, man, is it took me actually a long time to figure this out. So once my stuff came out and got big, then there were, I mean, tens of the hundreds of thousands maybe of imitators, right? Mm -hmm. And they all failed. Yep. All of them flopped. And at first, of course, the story I told myself was it's because I'm such a genius. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think that's true. But I, I, when I really, I got a little older and more mature, and I looked at what did I do that was succeeding, and what did no one else do? And the thing I realized was, I actually was, my stories are funny, right? But they're not about how cool I am. If you actually read them, I'm that butt of the joke at least as much as I'm the, the cool guy. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm the idiot or the asshole at least as much as I'm the good guy. And there are just enough moments of self-awareness and vulnerability where you're like, oh, this isn't just a narcissist screaming, look at me. Right. Like, this is a dude who's actually feeling things. Yeah, he may not be that mature or that advanced, but he's doing, he's being who he is. And almost everyone who tried to imitate me, did the dudes, yes. never did that. Yep. Now, but what came out of it, not just out of my stuff, but my stuff came, you know, was big when Sex and the City was big. There were a bunch of women who started writing stories about drinking and hooking up, and a lot of them got successful. Yeah. Like a lot of them, lot. actually, right? And, the, and almost all of them were, they had that element of self-awareness and deprecation uh, that none of the, it seemed like none of the dudes had. They actually had that. You know, mm -hmm. or some of them, the ones that were good. Yeah. You know? Chelsea Handler's a pretty iconic example. <laughs> there were dozens and dozens of others, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, man, if you go back and look at it, for me, I felt like once you had done it mm -hmm. and it came out and it was so successful, right. everyone else who tried to do it, the reason why they weren't is because you were like, dude, I already read this. Tucker Max did it. Well, that's, like, there's, there's the element of novelty. I already did it. Yeah. There is the element of novelty, but like there's also none of them had any self awareness, right? Because mm -hmm. you could. I re, Bird, our, our, <coughs> the agent we shared for a while. Sure. <laughs> he used to say, dude, my inbox is full of 10,000 pitches of how. Because you could be the, you know, the whatever, the, the, the military Tucker Max. So you, mm. could be, you could be novelty. Like you could be a version of that, right? Mm -hmm. But none of them did it either. Right. Which tells me they were all missing. And the stuff you read, it's all boring and awful. They were oh, all yeah. missing the point. Yeah. They yeah. didn't get that it was like, this is a dude sharing his actual real experiences. And then I worked hard to be funny and write it well, whatever, right? They, none of them did that. Right. They, they were just, hey, this is, look at me. I'm important. I want you to look at me without actually bringing the part that someone wants to look at, which is the vulnerability. You just described Dan Bilzerian, by the way. <laughs> I mean, that's like for real. There you go. Did you write his fucking book or something? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Dan Bilzerian could not pay me enough money to write his book. He actually came to us. Oh, dude, he. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell the story or not. I don't care. Go ahead. We don't uh, have a shit. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the fight. It's a true story. Wouldn't it be funny so, to see Tucker Max censoring himself on independent media <laughs> after all these years? Like, oh, I can't say that, man. Oh, he's changed. <laughs> no, um, uh, so Dan Bills, Dan Bills Aaron, I guess, is friends with uh, David Goggins or knows him. And so uh, Dan, uh, after David's book came out with us and did really, really well, 
Dan said, hey, connect me. He didn't uh, connect uh, me, uh, with me. He connected with the CEO, Javon. Because mm -hmm. David and Javon are like best friends. David tolerates me, but he really likes the CEO. And so uh, Javon talked to, to Dan a bunch and then basically realized what most people know is that he is a complete fucking dick. And not like a funny asshole, right? right. Like he's an actual dick to, inter to interact with as a person. Like he's extremely unpleasant to interact with. And so Javon's like, look, man, you, he offered us 10 times what we charge for the service. And he's like, no, I'm not going to take you as a client because I like the people who work here and I'm not going to ask them to endure your bullshit. Yeah. And he lost his fucking mind. He got really upset at Javon. And Javon's like, no, man. Like, like he, which proves what, it's why he's such a good CEO and why the company's doing so well is because someone like that's leading it and not me. But um, yeah, dude, he's actually a dick in real life. The other portion like, of this. It's not just an act. No, right? I'll piggyback off right. of it. I'll tell you the rest of it. Because the other portion <laughs> of this is he went to go sell his book and he wanted this certain huge number, advance. huge yes. advance, yes. monster advance. Yes. All the publishers came back and they were like, no, you'll get like a third of this. Like, yeah. and that's it. And fuck you. I deserve more and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, it, yeah, I was like, all I'm right, king of Instagram. cool. And then cut to, Go I had a buddy it. of mine who used to book him out for club appearances. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so he was excited. He took this younger protege yeah. with him or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he was getting good uh, appearance fees. And I was like, yeah. what's the whole shit? And he goes, oh man, it's terrible. Yeah. Like you sit at this club with all these hot ass girls that are either rented for or paid or whatever. And then you're just taking pictures all night. And then it's about that one picture for Instagram. And then they leave and that's kind of it. You just go home. And I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, the parties aren't crazy. It's yeah. not that fucking wild yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's all a uh, sham. And I was like, oh, well, all right. That's so what happened with it. the book? Uh, that's a great story. Do you know? I don't uh, either. So I, I know. Neil. I mean, unless it's a coloring book, his fans probably aren't going to buy it, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not sure what happened with well, it. Well, he's the perfect example. Of uh, like, you can pre order it right now. <laughs> can you for real? Can you? The Did setup, you find a publisher? The setup by Dan Bilzerian. I don't fucking know. I'm just hardcover and paperback. Uh, you can get a leather bound and signed edition. Oh, that's nice. If you would like. That is nice. Leather bound book. Uh, bless his heart. Um, <laughs> I want to look this up and see if there is a publisher on this. I mean, because um, this has been in the works, by the way, for years. So I know Neil, so he tried to get Neil Strauss to work on it. Maybe Neil did or maybe Neil didn't. Neil's worked on it. Yes. Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Neil sent me the draft he did. It was awesome. I'm like, you made Dan Bilzerian look like a smart human. And Neil's like, yeah, it took a lot of work. And then <laughs> Dan hated the draft. And I'm like, that's actually a good book. And then I don't, I, who knows how many other that's people That's because through or... Bilzerian was standing on top of the desk. The files are inside the computer <laughs> the whole time. He couldn't figure it out. That's what happened. And what was the name of the book, Bob? The setup. The setup. The setup what? So when, he, when he says the setup, does he mean the fact that his parents set him up with all that money? <laughs> yeah. What was the setup exactly? Because if so, Gary V can jump on that book and they can just co-author it exactly. together. Quit uh, your life. Quit your job. You're not happy. Quit your job. Yeah, My parents want to water. I, I should know. Well, the, the <laughs> <forward. laughs> just be honest. Exactly. <laughs> Don't sell me your bullshit. But he won a poker game or two, right? Bolzerian's a good gambler. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, sure, yeah. didn't he make Absolutely. a bunch of money? He, he, he made did, quite yeah, a bit. Yeah. yeah. So I like that part's legit. The Navy Seal thing. What? What? Did he quit buds or no, something like dude, that? Uh, he no, got no, no. injured twice, I think. I did. Uh, no, okay. I can yeah. tell. Well, at least that's the. I know, like, right I know the, the Navy SEALs who were the instructors. Mm. Oh yeah, what happened with him? What was the real story? So the real story, he made it through. Okay. Like, he, I think maybe he got injured once or twice. Uh, roll back, but he he went all the way to the end. He mm. like qualified, like he's mm. you know strong enough, whatever, all that shit. They hated him. Literally, the, 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 I think you can a, get peered out, right? They, ex that's those, exactly yeah. what oh, okay. he, he was peered out in buds, but not by the other uh, students. It was like the cadre, yeah. or the, the guys yeah. in charge. Either right? way, that can happen. Yeah, no, wow. one of the guys who was there, he's like, yeah, man, he actually did pretty solid at a lot of the stuff, you know, and he's not dumb. He's just such an asshole. And we couldn't stand, it wasn't just they disliked him, it's like he's such an ignorant asshole that he's gonna get someone killed. Yeah. And uh, so, like, they're like, we, we, and, and remember, he told me a story about the officers were trying to get him through, because I guess the officer's job to get people through, and the cadre want to cut the people, like, who aren't gonna, you know, do well and get people killed. And so, I won't say the name of the guy, but he's, he was there. He was one of the cadre. I think that's what they're called. Got it. And yeah. he's like, no, 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 dude, he, he was, he was legit. In all ways, except he was a fucking steaming pile of shit who would have gotten someone killed. Wow. Nothing's changed, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just telling you what I was told. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, with him oh, now, well, like, yeah. Except no one's dying. I don't think. Uh, almost. He almost killed that uh, prostitute. That uh, that that. Uh, who's the prostitute? He threw off the roof and she broke her leg. 
going into the pool. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I believe, was her name. Ah, uh, R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. One of the best to ever do it. Is that One of the right? best to ever sit on the court. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> Let's fact check that. And yeah, it was kid, a porn star. Yeah, well, was it? yes, there it is. Who's the porn star, Bob? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he threw her by the vagina. <laughs> ah. Uh, I'm seeing the video. The old cunt grab is what they call that on on uh, Deadwood. Uh, That's a Swearingen yeah. quote. Her name's Janice. That's all I can find so R. P. far. R.I.P. R.I.P. How Janice much Griffin. of a star? I mean, that always cracks me up. I'm a porn star. I'm like, really? Because I know about three porn people's names. Who are they? Star. We had one Ron on. Ron Jeremy. Okay. Jenna Jameson. <laughs> yep. Puma Swede. Oh, really? Because she was is. in the movie based on my life. Oh, 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 gotcha, gotcha. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. We had Lisa Ann on a few weeks ago. Oh, I do. I, we did Lisa Ann's book. We love her. I forgot about we Lisa We love Lisa Ann here on the show. She's my really God, funny. dude. She knows she sports. She's funny. She knows sports. Yeah. She knows fantasy football no, she's really smart. well. Yeah, she's smart. Yeah, she, she was is. rad, dude. She's smart. We, uh, we really enjoy this show, actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now we'll get to the movie. Right. So, book blows up, becomes successful. <laughs> yep. This is what everybody else wants to do. Turn their book into a movie. I was there for this. Now, this part I was there for. Um, <laughs> I was in L.A. for this. Um, I had done three movies for the casting director you hired, Joseph Middleton. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like he pushed that. me for this. And he goes, hey, dude, I just got this script. Like, Which role? You're the guy for you. It was really? for you, yes. Um, it was a long time ago, though. Um, and, uh, and he goes, no. You the right personality. He, he, yeah. But he goes, uh, no, he's looking for something else specific. And w I forget what it was. And I, the, the guy who got it was the guy from my Gilmore Girls, I believe. Yeah, Matt Zucker. Yes. Um, and uh, anyways, um, I was surprised that you did not just sell that to a studio and take all the fucking money. Yeah. Yeah, I did not do that. I could have. We had <laughs> huge offers. Well, big, Massive. You had figures. massive yeah, offers. We, we did. We did. Truly. Yeah. Um, it was one of those things where... Ugh, all right. Um... I hate talking about it because I, all I go back to is a time in my life when I was, I've been stupid a lot in my life. I think that was one of the height of stupidity moments and not just stupidity, but also complete, like everything I was just making fun about, Dan Bilzerian about, mm -hmm. I was like that, my version of that. Cause I wasn't in nowhere, to, but in, in that period, like it was the, it was the, I was completely unmoored and lost and um, thinking back on that now, I'm just like, I didn't do anything right. Like I, my decisions were bad. My, uh, the way I treated people was horrible. The way I treated myself, the way I oriented to the entire world was just totally fucked up in all ways. All like it just, it was, it was a dark period in my life. It's funny to say a movie was made about my life before I turned 33 and it was a su or 34 and it was a super dark period in my life, but it was, and I made it that way. It's not like bad shit was happening to me. Right. I, it was it, it just one of those things, man, where it's like, you know, some people just get too, a little too much success a little too early before they're really emotionally ready to handle it. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the case for me. And I didn't handle it well. And like not selling it to a studio was a bad decision. But I, I'll tell you what, the thought project, uh, process in my head was actually a great thought process for someone with a lot of emotional maturity. So uh, uh, no one in Hollywood owned their IP. No one. No like, one, yes. Uh, in, George Lucas owned his IP in Star Wars, and all the studios learned, oh, we can't let them keep their IP. Right. And so I'm like, but that's where all the money is. And the only other person since then is Tyler Perry, who had to move to Atlanta and start his own studio. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're both multi-billionaires. And I'm like, I'm not just playing this game to get pussy. I'm playing this game to win. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to own my IP. And because the book was so hot and the screenplay was so hot, I was able to actually work that deal with uh, a production company. And so, like, if... I, if this the whole thing had worked, it would have set me up the way Tyler Perry is, right? Right. And it could have worked. The problem was I picked a lot of shitty people to work on the movie, and I'm not criticizing them. It's sort of like my – I basically picked people who were willing to endure – the abuse and my emotional issues, and those are never going to be the best people, right? Because right, 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 like right. great people can work on any project. Why would I deal with this asshole? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and no, yeah. it was me. I was the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, like I, ma I made the right thought process if I had also been emotionally mature, right? But if you're gonna, it's like be emotionally mature, immature, cool, and just take the money, or be emotionally mature and go for the like go for the big thing. Yes. I kind of combine two things that don't go together. You know? got so, it, got it. and it's my own fault. No one else's fault. It, it, I got, but man, the movie uh, uh, did not do well. 
Did I say it right? It, 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 it did not. It did not. Yes. Uh, it, it was the hard, one of the hardest moments in my life, but also the only reason I have my shit together now, mm-hmm. the only reason I have this awesome company that, that is doing great, I have an amazing wife, incredible family, great kids. I have an incredible life now because I fucked that up so badly. And there were two, I had two options at that point, right? When I'm sitting, I'll, I mean, I'll even go like to the moment. I'm sitting in the A-loft in Tempe, Arizona, when we got the very first numbers, you know, like the Thursday night or whatever yeah, yeah, opens, yeah, yeah, you yeah. get the numbers, right? Yep. And, and it was like, oh, there's like a zero missing, right? So it's like, okay, this is going to bomb. Right, because you know me. Oh yeah, right? yeah. That opening and, weekend is so big for you that if it does not do well, either you know, word right. of mouth is gonna really pick yeah, up, yeah. or you're um, super troopers, and it happens two or three years later on DVD. Right. So, um, which are, the movie has done great, not super troopers level, but it's done very well on DVD. But n- nothing uh, um, that great. But anyway, so I knew immediately, and it was like, dude, it was like it cracked my grandiosity. Right. It was like one of those things where either you're gonna face the truth and it's gonna be really painful, and you're gonna come out the other end, or you're going to blame everyone else and you're going to double down on, on who you are and you're going to be, you know, 45 hanging out in a bar trying to pick up 20 year old girls. Right. Right. And I literally, it's like, I looked at both paths and it was like, fuck, like, I don't want to be that dude. That's miserable. And so like, it was like, I, it did not right away. It took me about a decade to really face my shit and deal with it. And I'm still not done by any stretch, but it sucked so yeah. much, but it was like kind of what I needed. You know, so and the reason I ask is because I'm friends with Joseph, the casting director. Yeah, and I he's go, a great so dude. afterwards, when I because the script was lights out, mm-hmm. the script was great, book was great, obviously, and I was like, it's gonna. You be know, Neil's wrote that script with me. Oh, did he really? Neil Parker, yeah. Oh shit, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, it was a great, it was a great script, and I go, uh, I, I, I was pissed off. I was like, man, I, this would have been awesome, and he goes, yeah. it's gonna, it's a mess. He goes, you don't want anything to do with it. He goes, he's he right. goes, he's he right. goes, homeboy is is, uh, is is drinking with people and taking them out. Uh, you, you were taking out the cast to get fucked up. Oh, before. dude, there was all kinds of, <laughs> I mean, that you want to talk about a book of, fu- that would have been funny. Like a book of behind the scenes, like of like a fly on the wall. Cause I couldn't write it. I was too, I had my head too far up my own ass. You know, like yeah. I was drinking my own Kool-Aid at that point. I had no self-awareness. Whereas I, when I wrote beer in hell, I was poor. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, my life was fun. I was poor in a way where it's like, I had to face the reality of my life. Right. By the time I got to the movie, I didn't have to face the reality of my life. So like, Buck Tucker is like Conor McGregor four years ago. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, a movie Con- <laughs> yes, is Conor McGregor now. It's 100% correct. This other guy. Yes. Yes. That's an amazing comparison. I do comparisons. That's what he does. Yeah. Really. And pie charts. He loves pie charts. <laughs> well, it's like, it's, remember Ross Pro in 92? Yep. Can, can I finish? And he's like pointing to this board. Like nobody yeah. in America is reading fucking charts, dude. <laughs> Get out of here. No, we're all done with charts. Oh, bitch. Once USA Today went out of print. Um, are they still around? <laughs> yes. Yes, they are? Yes. Good for them. Pie yeah. charts still? Yeah. Colors? Yeah. I like all that. I like all that. It's very simple. Yeah, I enjoy colors. And less opinions. I don't think um, you can say I'm that. I'm good with that. Oh, can we? All colors matter. Oh, colors. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was no ED on the end yeah, of that, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, moving on from we're that. We're still under quota. Right. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. We're, we're well under Morgan Wallen quota. <laughs> He's going to be on the show next week, I think. So, um, uh, but uh, we'll ask him. Maybe we'll find out. With that, after all this disaster happens, right. you switch up your writing. Yeah. Um, and then you start putting out like a dad book um, no. and things like that. Dad book? Yeah. Didn't you put a, a relationship book out of like. No, it was about how to, how to get girls, how to deal with women properly. Right. Properly. Yeah. Right. Like that, in an effective way, instead of most of the dating books are terrible. It's dating, not dad. Cr- okay, cr- right. But with that, you were no longer the guy who was just fucking girls all the time. Like, right. I was trying to help young guys. Correct. Not, not Did you get any pushback for that? Eh, I mean, sort of. Not really. Like, uh, that book didn't really... It did okay. It didn't do that well. It's the weirdest thing. I still... I get more email now about that book than any other book I've ever written, though. Like hate mail? No. The other way around. Or asking advice and shit? No, no. Yeah. It's like, dude, the dudes who actually read it are like, holy shit, this is amazing. This changed my life. It's just like, there's just not that many that read it. It's in the, If you're a young guy and you're totally lost about women, that's the book. Got it. Like, you guys wouldn't need it. Like, it's not for... It's, it's for young dudes who just have no, who basically didn't have good dads or good male uh, role models or someone who could teach them exactly, here's uh, what women want. Right? Yeah, yeah, here's yeah, how yeah. to do it in a way that's, whether if you want to sleep with a lot of women, cool. If you want to have a, just one uh, partner, awesome. But th- there's basically a set of strategies that work in how to understand women, how to understand dating. Um, 
it's the book for that. And so I get tons of mail still. Um, but Niels actually helped me and uh, Dr. Miller write that. Oh, no Jeff shit. Dr. Miller, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, he's one of those, like, Niels, if you get a hold of him, it's yeah, just like, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you keep using him forever. No, the book, did, it didn't do that well, but it, it's, it's had a huge impact on a small number of people. Mm-hmm. I, st- I still get so much email from that, about that book relative to the number of copies it sold. Yeah. <laughs> I get an overwhelming amount of feedback, <laughs> actually. Has there ever been a book that came through that you were just like, ah, oh, shit. Uh, or somebody else's life that you really wanted and and it just didn't work out for some reason. Oh, if I did it by O.J. Simpson. Yeah, dude. It's I mean, the one because everybody wants to murder. I feel we like. all do. We all want to murder yeah. Tucker. Like, I, I, you could, yeah, yeah. O.J. actually right signed it. Well, so we should explain it real quick. Here's the rules, kids. Um, this oh, was nice. before he, yeah. before the double murder. I think uh, he was actually before the in, double murder. I think he was in Moab. This. Well, my favorite part about that is he writes Hall of Fame on like people don't know O.J. Simpson's a Hall of Famer. Well, it's worth more. It's worth more. <laughs> and then like, the the belt behind us for Hulk Hogan that was before he said the N word too. Mm-hmm. So like we want that uh, we want to keep that clear for the audience. And just in case you were here and you were like, <laughs> man, what the fuck? All these people are fucked up. And it's like, uh, yeah, uh, it was pre sex tape for him. So let's just understand that. Uh, he's fine. a champion and he will be respected. That Brendan Fraser signed autograph uh, picture down there was before he was involved in 9 11 as well. It's true, yeah. Brendan well, Fraser did 9 11. Before he found the donut table, I heard. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I know, dude. He's, uh, he's swollen up. I don't know if it's. Well, swole is not the right word. <laughs> he's doing a movie about uh, like a 600 pound life. Okay, has he been doing it for the last 25 years? Because he's been fat as fuck for a while. That's, That's the so question. You have an opinion about this. That's the question. I have an we opinion don't, about everything. We don't know. <laughs> when he came out and said that he got his taint rubbed by a gay man at a party that's that was when i checked out of brendan fraser like i was all done well, with well, b fraser why what's up why were yeah, you how did why did you check out well so during the because Me he Too, wasn't he wasn't man enough to admit full penny or what yeah well here's so two, two things right? somebody was in there two, that's what you I, don't, I think you don't stop at the fucking taint 100 you know? nobody does that it's like grabbing a bowling ball and you're yeah. trying to find where that middle finger goes yeah. and uh, with with beef rage, it was during the the Me Too movement, and as it was going on, do you remember there was like a few dudes who came out like Terry Crews, was just like I got my dick grabbed at a party, and it was like, oh great, by a gay agent, and it was like Terry, Cr- and he sued. Uh, I think he sued William Morris, right? Uh, um, and it was like you're Terry Crews. Why didn't uh, you just tear the guy's arms yeah, off? Yeah, right. Fucking exactly. Beat? Well, then it's a hate crime, though, right? I, but he got his dick grabbed no, first. He's, he's, if a gay dude grabs your dick, no, but he's in twenty and twenty twenty one. That's true. He's black, yeah. he's so, black. so yeah, he maybe. he was fine yeah. to yeah. to either rip this guy's arm out of the socket or whatever. I didn't get that. And then there was a couple more dudes. And then Brendan Fraser's just doing this interview for this movie, and he was just like, "Yeah, you know, uh, what do you think about me too?" And he was like, ah, "We've all gone through our awkward moments, and one of them was traumatizing to me was yeah. a gay man stuck his hand on the back of my pants." And like grabbed like from underneath so too. Just a handful of butt and taint. Well, no, 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 no. Taint and like a, maybe clipped a ball from like behind. And then he was talking yeah. about this story and it was just like, all right, cool. But like, right. you what do you got to say over there? Proud in of court, that. that's called a, a perineum. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, say yeah. perineum in court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're not in court. We're on we're drinking, not, bro. Yeah. So it's taint, no, motherfucker. And then, it's taint, motherfucker. So the, the, and then Scrum. Of, of course, it comes around, it's Kevin Spacey. Right. Yeah. Well, bring it full circle. That's what I was hoping for, right? right? And it just turned out it was like some random agent or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, dude, enjoy, like, enjoy that. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> I remember, free. yeah, it was a kid, as that. a kid, there was like the church that I went to. It's one of the, the first priests like busted in the, yeah. uh, in the thing. And I was like, I didn't get touched. And I was like, was I not good, good looking yeah. enough? Because you always, you wonder that, You right? have to take a number up there where you wash your hands on the way in. 100%. That's a problem. And uh, I think the real lesson here is don't smell Kevin Spacey's hands. Ever. Yeah, like, ever. Because... But I was at a big, big, yeah. big dinner one time, yeah. and uh, I'm sitting across from this unbelievably powerful producer, right? right? And he was with one of the hottest girls I've ever seen. And, yeah. uh, and she's looking at me, I'm looking at her, and I'm like, right. oh, man, this is fucking rad. And I, and I feel this hand on my cock, right, underneath the, the dinner table. And there's eight of us. <laughs> it's him. And we're at... Uh, it's all veiny and old. Yeah, well, here's the thing. <laughs> I don't know, because I can't see it, right? And it's underneath the... Grab it and no, see. I, I, I was going to let it play out. Because I was fine with everything that was going you on. You wanted the role in his movie, too. No, just not that. Like her. Not that. Yeah. But me and her swapping eye contact, you know, stealing glances, yeah. all that yeah. other stuff. And then uh, Homegirl in the in the middle of this, of like, hey, hey. Yeah. She was like, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like, she motioning me yeah. to the bathroom. She gets up, walks, and there's still a hand on my dick. And that's when there I was like, go. oh, no, oh, boy. Ah. And my, <laughs> my, my agent was sitting next to me, and he goes, no, 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 just kind of slide it off. <laughs> Slide it off. You don't want to offend him. You don't want to offend him. And I was like, I'm not offended. Um, 
he went, he shot a shot, dude. Like he's gay. Like that's, that's what gay dudes did. Like I'm down, but at least I knew I was loved and I was, let special. me, let me ask you this. You look over at the woman and she's trying to get your attention. Then you find out she's got her hands on his cock. Do you have to then go to your left <laughs> and grab the next cock? Yeah, like, like what's the, what are the, what is the etiquette? I do it at a party when everybody's getting their dick touched. I'm not really sure. I mean, I guess it's, Man, I, some of these free for alls you never know. I mean, you, did you ever get in a stitch like that where you walked into a room and it was, no. oh, dude, we had so, there's only no. been in the history of Drinker Bros, we've done, I think, 1,100 episodes ish, right. somewhere in there. There's two we couldn't air. Um, one I can never talk about. We will air it after this person dies and uh, something else, right? right? Yeah. Now, the other one was uh, a few gay dudes who had just went off for like two and a half hours. We were up in the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> talking about this crazy fucking orgy that they went to on mm -hmm. ecstasy. Right. And there was 150 dudes at a house and each, all of them were fucking each other and everything else. Yeah. And he just went into super graphic detail. And like, and, but I got to ask cause right, I was right. curious. Yeah, right. Cause who's ever been to one of those except yeah. that hundred percent. Yeah. And it was unbelievably fascinating. And, and Evan, the uh, CEO of black rifle coffee. Yeah. Um, it's like, we can't put that. Well, up. here's the thing. It's like, so, delete that right so now. <laughs> Since the show ended, you know, you get up, you thank the guests, and you're on your way, and, and Evan looks over at the editor, and he goes, delete that. <laughs> delete that right now. Del and I'm like, I'm like, yo, what, what? And he goes, nope, not kidding. Delete the fucking, delete that episode right now. And I don't even want a, a chance that that'll get out, um, because there was like six of us asking like hardcore graphic yeah, right. gay, and I was just like, he goes, no, 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 we're going to head and, and uh, cut that off now. Um, it's a, I bet that was pretty interesting. It was amazing. To, and the guy had a great name. His name was David July. Um, so David July, if you're out there and you're watching, <laughs> know this. I want you back on. And Dan and I will, <laughs> will go full gay with you and un, like try to get into that world um, uh, because it's fascinating. Awesome. Yeah. But is there one guy that you were like, all right, man, that would have been an amazing life and an amazing story. And I wish I, wish I could have worked on that or, or worked with that guy in some capacity. Um. It's funny you mentioned there's one I can't because I actually signed I signed on to do uh, a book with at the time unquestionably now probably still but like basically the biggest movie star in the world to be like the co-writer and then um, he ended up deciding not to do the book mm -hmm. and like I talked to like he has an insane story and no one knows the story and yeah like I I signed an NDA and I'm like it's not even like I'm just whatever I one of those weird people who keep my word, mm. promise him. So, uh, but that's, that's the one where it's like, man, if this dude ever decides to tell us, I get why he doesn't. Cause it's very, it's Tom Cruise. And he tells the story of being an alien. No, he's it's, from outer space. I fucking knew it. That's why he's aging in reverse right now. Yep. It's the fucking, uh, <laughs> no. the radiation from our no. sun is slowly turning him into Superman. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's for all you physics majors. No, the, no Scientologist. Works. I think would hire me to write. No, a you never know. know. You know, they hide in plain sight. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't think they hire anybody outside of Scientology That's when it comes exactly. to their PR. It's true. They, well, they're already giving up 18% of their life salary anyway, so it's like they do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's Jesus true. is a better deal at this point. Oh, yeah. It's 10%, guy. I mean, look, if you somebody could take my property taxes down 8%, I'd fucking the Mormons say yes are right five. Just, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's only I know. five? Shit, I'm going to get my own planet too at the end? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here. Yeah, I've got the reason I ask is I have one too. There's just one sitting yeah. there where I'm like, all right. If this guy calls me at any point yeah. to do this, and, I, and I've chatted with him multiple times about it, if he calls me at any point, I will drop whatever I, I am doing and say, look, I'm yeah. going to write this because it's the craziest shit of all time. And I got to see some of it in person right. um, in Hollywood, and I was just like, oh, God damn it, dude, this would fucking just destroy if people actually knew the story. And mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we're all sitting on one when you're like, all right, cool, yep. cool. Um, the guy paid me. Not for the, like a third of the fee up front. Sure. And so I told him, listen, you ever want to do the book, go ahead. Like, just call me. Like, you've already paid the first third. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we'll just, I'm in. Ever call, did he ever call you back? No. He could go full Audie Murphy, write his own autobiography, and then star in it as himself in his own movie. He could. Oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. could. Right. He could all day long. That's a crazy story. The other one that was around uh, when I was getting going was... Um, uh, for the first one for Night She Cries While You Rise to Sea was uh, Ronda Rousey's. Um, and they'd put her book out like the week before mine, which is yeah. awesome because yeah. that means 
all of the advertising went to Rondo, but uh, <laughs> and they paid a fuck ton of money for it. Yeah. That one they were supposed to make into the to a movie. Yeah, and uh, and I don't know what happened with I that. I don't think as anyone well. cares about her anymore. She's not fighting. It's strange, right? Well, she went. Didn't she like quit to be an actress and then it just didn't work or something? Yeah, right? she was in WWE for a while, and right. now she does a reality show yeah. on. Whereas Gina Carano actually like got jobs and was doing before. Oh, yeah. you know she yeah. didn't tow the the woke line, but like. I think, yeah, Rhonda never went anywhere, right? I, I don't remember her being anything. WWE no. and she was, some... She's in a Fast and the Furious. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, as a, how, how much time on camera? Uh, she got a pretty good fight with uh, the Latina chick. I forget her name. Michelle Rodriguez? Is yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I think it's Latinx. I think you're saying that wrong. <laughs> no. It's Latinx, it right? Like, no one said that out loud, ever. Oh, no, 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 no never. Never. Never, never. yeah. No one. No one has said Latinx. At all. I'm going to say it here tonight, but um, obviously, because that's to all of our Latinxers and our Latinx listeners. Uh, our all, our head of sales, by the way, is, is Latino. And she's yeah. like, no one fucking uses this no. goddamn phrase. Yeah. We hate it. Yeah. Latino. We hate it. Yes. Yeah. Because female. Ah, whatever, man. I, I'll, I mean, call, if you're gonna, I'll call her abuela. If you're, you're going to you're gonna reject the Latinx thing, then you have to at least choose one of the two binary fucking But words. we never got to, is it Latinx or is it just Latinx? It doesn't matter. You're rejecting the premise I thought it was outright. Latinx. It could be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't either. Because uh, only the wokest idiots on earth would ever yeah. even pretend oh, dude, to use Oh, dude, 100%. But, yeah. Speaking of which, um, do you keep up with Hollywood or any of that shit? Like, the Emmys was on last I night. I try not to. Yeah, it's weird, right? right. I don't even know who won. Yeah, no, I have no idea. So, last night, it was because right after you left my house, um, mm. uh, it just said, hey, next up is the Emmys. And I looked at my yeah, wife. a football game, you're right. Yes, and I, I looked at my wife and I go, wait, what the what? fuck? <laughs> I haven't heard one word about the Emmys. Because uh, we, no live, one was in, we watching. live in Texas. No one cares. No, it's bullshit. No one, no one cares, cares, one, two. Right. It was in a, uh, a tent last night. Yeah. So, I mean, there was like 15 tables. It looked like something they had just like raced together of like, oh, hey, guys, at Holiday and like, we've got a fucking conference coming in, dude. <laughs> and you guys got rocks. Like, we've got we've to gotta make up the, the dinner banquet right. hall immediately. <laughs> Um, it the felt, pipes broke in the conference room, so we got to throw a tent up. One hundred percent, and that's what it oh, looks that's like. Brilliant. So everybody who was watching was yeah. just like, "Wait a minute, man!" We went from like the super richness of of everything to yeah. like we're in a tent with about eight to ten tables. Yeah, but still, and, the slaves are wearing masks. Still, yeah, you know right. that? that was my favorite. Like, yeah. and I say that word "slaves" because that's what it's starting to look like it now. Is. It's like rich people <laughs> or politicians surrounded by masked people. Yes. Like, I don't yeah. want these dirty people getting me dirty, man. Yeah. <laughs> it is. The fuck out of here. You're it's, right. It's so funny you said that. So, like, watch a cunt I watched it for like twenty minutes last night. Seth Rogen got up on uh, stage and he goes, "Hey." I know we were supposed to, like, this is supposed to be an outdoor event because of COVID or whatever, yeah. but he goes, this is, we're closed in. There's a roof here, and this does not <laughs> feel safe. He goes, I had Paul Bettany sneeze on me earlier, and I was washing my fruit inside a store, like, three hours ago, and uh, it was like, yes, nobody was wearing masks. Uh, nobody was doing nah, shit. People were hugging, people. kissing. In and California, the rules are for the little people. It's for the fucking poor. Mm -hmm. That's all it is, like. Um, no, not financially poor. For the little people. It's different. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can have midgets. a bunch of money. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Not those little people. That's okay, a whole gotcha, difference. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> right? Only midgets <laughs> have to wear masks. When it's, a, it's a big club and you ain't Super it. spreaders, Max. Super <laughs> spreaders, all right? Uh, and I'm going last name now, okay? Yeah, so you know yeah. I'm serious. But no messing around with <laughs> the midgets. <laughs> Super yeah. spreaders, yeah, but less and less people are starting to care about that shit now. Um, and the week before was the MTV uh, Music Awards. Yeah. It drew under a million ratings, and it was on six different networks at the same time. And you were just like, oh, yeah. this is over. We're all right. done with award yeah. shows. Yeah. And well, other I stuff. mean, yeah. network television in general is kind of fucked up now, but imagine being one of these people. Imagine being Hoffa with the Golden Gloves or the, or the, the Academy or, or the Emmys and thinking that people care about mm -hmm. any of this shit anymore. Yeah. Like, you yeah. are so fucking tone deaf right now. Well, they Jesus don't have a, they, they don't think a universe exists outside of theirs. That's why That's they, they're not even like, what do you mean people don't care? Everything revolves around it. They're you like, spend plenty of time in Hollywood. You know yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. They like, don't think a reality exists outside nope, of them. No, they're no. like every other aristocracy that's ever existed in, exactly in humanity. Right. I mean, that's true. They, they think they're fucking untouchable and above everyone until fucking some... One of, the, one of the little people decides they've had enough, right? Yeah. And then that's how all your country falls apart. And the little people, again, we're, we're still referencing midgets on this because they've got a lot of power. Yeah. A lot well, especially of power. especially in the legs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because dwarfs have normal cocks. Uh, um, 
Okay. I did. I, I worked with him. He was. He, uh, he went over the whole story and then he pulled it out yeah. on set, and I was like, oh my god. Well, yeah, because the torso and right. He's got a fucking hammer on him. Not like the guy from Sex Life on Netflix or anything, but like, you know, like, have you seen that one? Has your wife oh. made you watch it? No. Oh yeah, my wife told me about it, and no. uh, now you can't. We have to tell him now. What? Uh, so Sex Life. Okay. Episode three. You don't yeah. have to watch the show. It sucks. Okay. Um, a- episode three. Yeah. 19 minutes and 50 seconds in. Okay. Just just keep that time code in your mind and enjoy it. And you okay. you text me and be like, oh, my God. Yeah. Let me know. Because even my mom was watching the show one night and she was just like, hey, dude, you kept talking about it. So I watched it. She sent me back an emoji of a baguette, like a French baguette on my thing. And she was like, you were right. That guy's got a fucking hammer on him. <laughs> Same with dwarves. I'm dead serious, man. These fuck. They... I mean, that's Bushwick Bill's always talking about his penis. And it's so. true, by the way. Yeah. R.I.P. He's dead, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah. No, yeah. wait. No, he's not. Is is Bush- he? Yeah, Bushwick died. He did? Yeah. Yeah, he died. We're going to need to fact check that. Bob, so. Bushwick Bill. Was it like in he the last died, year? He uh, died June 9, 2019 in Denver, Colorado. Boom. At the height of three feet, eight inches. Yeah. Well, that oh, was pre-COVID, man. so I don't really have an Yeah, I thought you were going to say at the height of COVID. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would, yeah you but, say, would you say height or would you say kind of like the low of, of Pentacle. three eight. Z, he was three eight. Three eight. Yeah. Man, so he What's, was an actual midget. One does of anybody, the best. Does anybody know the data on? Uh, does it have the measurement of his penis? COVID SARS V two and. Uh, we'll that real quick. Yeah, he'll look it up. He'll find it. I bet you. It's, I bet he's slanging an ocho or, or bigger, on a dwarf like that. Uh, the guy. Oh, you can't say midget. Oh, uh, we. I didn't get monetized. Oh, that's what somebody told me that. That's one, that's one of their <laughs> on words YouTube? for some reason. Midget is yeah, one. Midget. You don't say. Yeah. Odd. No? Odd. Yeah. I'm saying I'm going to say it again because we're we're past well, it's too that. Late. But, now uh, we just had a whole conversation about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we're, I think we're all good with that the, that that little guy. But uh, I'd say because the dwarf that I knew when he pulled it out, it was it was an eight. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. All right. Cool, man. Um, and his whole thing, the whole movie was just to get laid, and then it happened. Yeah. Finally, somebody was just like, all right, I'll fucking sleep with a dwarf, dude. <laughs> I can't find his penis size, but I did come across something in The Gothamist. Apparently, there's a thing in Brooklyn every year called okay. Brooklyn's Smallest Penis Contest. Yeah. So. When, is that, when does that start? I want to go up there. How do, and how do I get to I judge know, it? I feel like we're famous <laughs> enough. The SEO for Bushwick brought me that. Did it really? <laughs> Son of a bitch. I, we've got to get Ari in and get, I got to get in on this. I'll judge. I'll judge a man's cock easily and okay. just be like, and enjoy it. Like, I'm not going to win, luck away anything. I will, uh-huh. I will put my time into it and be like, that, sir, is a beautiful cock. Congratulations <laughs> to you and your family. Or I'll tell them what's yeah. fucked up with it. Someone's got to do it. I guess. Yeah. Because yeah. I used to do some amateur circumcisions, like, <laughs> at home. Um, uh, if you're thinking about having another kid, you need, no, you need me. My kids my are services. not circumcised. They're not going. They're uncirced. Of course. No way. What was Why the reason? Why would I mutilate their genitals? I love them. Why would I do that? Do you? Are you uncirced? No, I'm <laughs> circumcised. Okay. Double, double circ. <laughs> yeah, did you, did you double up. Did you recirc later in life you where you're just like, hey, that dude. light skin at the top for him, it goes all the way down. Yep, that pink skin. Yeah. It's all pink skin. Yep. <laughs> no, dude, I mean, you guys know the story about circumcisions, right? Like why they became a thing outside of obviously the Jewish community. I yeah, thought yeah. it was a health reason. No, that's made up bullshit. Yeah. Really? Like, yeah, you know, like the Ke- the heir to Kellogg's. Uh, uh, the, uh, I think oh, it was Tony Kellogg's or General Mills. One of the, the heirs to one of the big cereal fortunes. I know it sounds crazy, right? But true. Yeah. Uh, he <laughs> basically got up like like a r- crazy rich person, got obsessed with, I think he probably had a lot of sexual issues, a lot of repressed stuff, and was like, you know, men need to start masturbating less. And so like... His, oh, so he founded the Proud Boys then. <laughs> 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 so no, he, I'm telling you, there's like a lot of, go. There's, I think there's a bunch of YouTube videos about this now. This all is like, really? All yeah, I can think about right now yeah. is William Shatner yelling and instead of Khan, it's foreskin. Yeah. And he's just mad at foreskin. <laughs> he's standing over a fucking bur- a pile of burning foreskin every night, stoking it. I'll get him. Uh, yeah. I'll fucking get him. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. It's, it's one of those weird things where it's like, why do we do this? It's not health reasons. Like the Jewish do it as a way, my understanding is it like a, basically as a way of designating someone's part of the tribe, like that thousands of years old. Okay. Uh, though I'm not a, a, you know, a Talmudic or rabbinical scholar. Uh, but America, I know for, for why it's done. It's 100% the obsession of a crazy rich person to stop people masturbating, men masturbating. No shit. Yeah. Um, no, well, it's a tr- you can look at a true I'm, story. I'm can, s- you can't make that crazy shit. Obviously, up. but I'm cirked and I, I never, you know, that didn't stop anything. Um, <laughs> How do you know? Yeah, obviously. It, it was, you might have masturbated a lot more. Oh, it, boy. It, it, next. It, it was to control, and I'm using the, the term I found in the article here, masturbatory insanity. <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> you don't say. <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah. yeah. The, the foreskin or prepus uh, controls that. Prepus? Was that what it is? Prepus? Yeah. Okay, prepus, there we go. Either way. Yeah, prepus is... Yeah, prepus, it's the part right before... Right, before you, put, yeah, right, right before you put I it mean, in the I mean, the dude lived until he was 91, so he, maybe he had something. Maybe he was on to uh, something, dude. Yeah, he had a fucking pretty sweet mustache, too. Uh, did he really? Is that yeah. the dude? Yeah. Can we find? Can you put a picture of him on screen, Bob? It's John Harvey Kellogg with two G's. John Harvey like Kellogg. Kellogg. I told you, it was one of the serial yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sean, only serial killers have three names, though. John Harvey... That's, he sounds like he's Well, there's killed. probably a bunch of John Kellogg's assholes uh, who to get to separate him from the rest. Harvey, though? Separate but equal. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. Um, he was a seventh. Because we believe in that. Dan, Dan was, has been staunchly again, you know, for the civil rights for a long time. He was, did it before it was trendy. Yeah. Um, there this, he is. This guy takes Put him up skin. on screen. What is that, Colonel fucking Sanders wow. over here? I mean, he's but still. He's got a bozo ring. That's him way later in life. This picture's earlier. Yeah. Uh, but he's, uh, yeah. Nice mustache. Look at his left hand there. Is he wearing a glove of some sort? Can you pan in on that? Or no, is that just that, his hands? Are, those are liver spots, my man. <laughs> are they? Yeah. That looks like diabetes. No, well, uh, it might be diabetes. Go down to the left hand. There it is. Oh, it, my it God. It could be diabetes, but that's a liver spot. Look and at that meat hook. Ooh. Oh, get in the, on yeah, the hand, there it too. Is. My God, man. That's a big hand. I feel like we're watching a Zapruder film right now. Back I know. to the left. <laughs> you know how many times? Diagnosing diabetes from 70-year-old from pictures. From afar. Yeah. I mean, look. <laughs> that guy has hit his wife a lot. That that's still swollen from the night before, you know. <laughs> I like his Wikipedia page, known for, and right next to that, cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> like if you didn't know that Kellogg was associated with that, you'd be like, wait, what? <laughs> He's known for corn. Is a guy just walk around eating cornflakes all day? <laughs> known for for cornflakes and beating his wife. And Battle Creek Sanitarium, apparently, which he started. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which was a Seventh Day Adventist insane asylum, pr probably where he was cutting foreskins off. Yeah. Well, well, that's the snake there one, dude. It also brings that's into the question, one. what exactly is in cornflakes? Because they do look like shriveled up fucking be our, uh, uh, foreskin a little bit. Maybe right? that was his inspiration. Yeah. Like, I want it to look like this. He's, foreskin. He's flapping a foreskin. A around. crispy oh, little foreskin. He throws it down on the table. Don't call me back until it looks like this. Yeah. Walks out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> or wheelchairs out of the room, probably. Oh, man. Yeah. Man, yeah, but I think he's given his wife a few rap, raps on the beak, like uh, Sean Connery did. I mean, he comes from that generation. Yes, so. yeah. I mean, who knows? Some would argue we should still be in that generation, but you know, no, that's what I tell my wife. You met her earlier. I was like, right. hey, uh, liquor your bottle wife looks goes. Like she might be able to knock you out. Empty. Though. Yeah, she. She. Had, and I mean that as a compliment to her, yeah. not an insult. Yeah, she's taking a few swings. Right. She's taking a few <laughs> a few swings over the years. You know, uh, I don't blame it's been her. ten years. So, dude, <laughs> it's hard. How long you been married? Uh, nine. Yes. Nine, yeah. Eight and a half nine? Yeah. Like that. So when you get to that at some point, yeah. she's probably taking a shot at you. you she know? punched me in the arm once. It's true. She got mad and punched me in the arm. She's mad about something random and like slugged me. I'm like, why are you punching me? She's like, I'm just so angry. I'm like, well, why would you punch me in the arm too? It's like, yeah. what is this, third grade? Just to let her, <laughs> just to let you know, she still got it. Yeah, be an American right. and go get a gun out of the closet. Yeah. <laughs> Wave it around. Uh. You sit her down and make her watch all 10 parts of that OJ doc that won the, the thing. And it was just like, look. You are on stage one right now, okay? You're in. You're still in this uh, chapter. Don't make me go to chapter seven in that uh, fucking thing. That won the Oscar. Uh, <laughs> now is the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Do they have to be alive? No. Do they have to drink? Nope. They don't even have to be real. Frank, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do whatever you want. Because a lot of people don't know, but in all sincerity, Drinking Bros was started um, uh, by our co-host who just was like, look, if you feel like you want to kill yourself, uh, never drink alone. Um, online, we have a private we have private pages, over 800 subgroups. You can find somebody in every city right. and just reach out and be like, hey, man, I need something to talk to you. It doesn't necessarily involve liquor or, or booze. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man. Um, well, so the the... This is probably going to sound lame, but it's just the truth. So the, the person who I've been reading a ton of their stuff recently has really helped me is a guy. Do you guys know who David Hawkins is? Have you ever heard of him? Mm. You probably, I, hadn't known, I didn't know who he was until about five years either. He's like, um, I don't know, he's like a psychiatrist who died like 20 years ago or something or 10 years ago and wrote all these books on um, 
like just emotions and therapy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it was just like uh, most of the people who write about that shit do a horrible job explaining what the hell they mean. Right. David Hawkins is, uh, has did a good job, at least for me. His book, Letting Go, especially, is like kind of famous. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, that? I've, yeah, I've right. heard of the book. I just haven't read it. Right, yeah. yeah. It's one of those books, too. I heard about it, and then finally I read it. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Now I know why people recommend it. It's incredible. So, like, that's just what came to mind when you... Said so who inspired me because that's who I'm in the middle of reading a lot and learning from. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And what is it about his writing that is so inspirational? Like, what, like, what's he getting to the point of that anybody else well, hasn't? Because there's so many yeah, books. Yeah. Like so, that. so he talks about a lot of stuff that the deep emotions and spiritual stuff, stuff that's very hard, amorphous, and hard to define. Mm -hmm. And most people who you know who talk about that are kind of the fairy, airy fairy, woo woo type. And it's like, okay, that's cool. I don't know what the hell you're saying, right? right? He he's a psychiatrist, an MD, and like uh, something else. Um, uh, and like uh, he talks about it in a way that's very not clinical, but very rational and very understandable to someone who comes from more of a just a Western materialist mindset. Like it's like, oh, now I understand what these lunatics mean when they say holding space or whatever the hell, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, this makes total sense. I totally get it. So it's it's almost like having a translator to a different world and realize, oh, there's a lot of meaning over there. I just didn't understand what the hell any of them were saying. It's almost like like speaking. Oh, like uh, I understood those German people were actually saying something irrelevant. I just didn't speak German before. Right. Same sort of thing. Got it. Kind of. Kind of. I know it's not that funny or interesting of an answer. Not at just... all. I just <laughs> you went to Germany. <laughs> no. We don't do that that much on this show. <laughs> um, very rare. Somebody brings up the Germans. You know. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. When's the last time you read Anne Frank? Uh, <laughs> no, a true story. About a year ago. <laughs> I swear to God in my life I did. No, diary, and I read the unabridged version because I realized I hadn't, I'd read the abridged version in high school. Yeah. Like the one that didn't have all, you know, or period and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 Right, I read the unabridged version of, uh, actually about a year and a half, it was last summer, May. It was May, the May of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I read it and it, it, it's an amazing book, man. She's incredible. Like, yeah. Not to be a downer, but like arguably the greatest. It's an upper on this show. We're Francophiles. Mm. Dude, arguably the greatest memoir ever written in the history of the world is written by a 12-year-old Jewish girl hiding in an attic in Amsterdam. It's the fucking craziest thing to think about. Oh, it's yeah. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's amazing. We were uh, very close to making a movie about her. Um, but There's it was called a lot of movies. Well, Frank. this one was called Trans Frank. Um, and she was, it, it was Trans Frank versus Nazi zombies. And she, well, because we wanted, we, we had to appease Hollywood. So, like, we had to make her a transgender and then she goes back and kills all the zombies. So who's gonna? Ellen Page is gonna play her then, or Ethan? Whatever, no, like right? Elliot, Elliot Page. Page. Elliot, yeah, right, yeah, sorry. Elliot Page. Yeah. Um, and uh, and the the because we, we we made a movie poster, everything. It got real close. I mean, we were this close, and it, and the tagline was, "I'm all done hiding." <laughs> and so I'll show you the. You must actually, have had a fucking blast writing that screenplay. That was, it was oh, worth it just to write the screenplay. Yeah, I actually. Pull up the oh, poster, dude. Bob. That's pull up the poster amazing. so they can yeah. see it. Go to Google. It'll just type in trans, trans trans Frank poster and go. For when was this? When did you almost have the? Because I feel this like this was, was three years, this would be three greenlit. Years ago, I think this would be greenlit on the tagline now. Well, no, <laughs> I, I doubt it. Now Hollywood is not making any comedies anymore. So well, that's also true. Uh, just type in trans Frank uh, movie poster into Google and it or should pop just up. Just trans Frank and you'll see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Versus Nazis. What's that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. It's low res. It's low res. You, you can just well, put it up on screen. Well, that's the People problem the with vibe. it, is that it's low res. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there it is right there. There it is. Uh, Look at that. That's so good. That was uh, Donnie good. O'Malley who was going to play uh, Trans Frank. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm done hiding. That was the tag. I'm telling you, man, you attach Ethan Page to this, it's made. I'm telling you, greenlit. Triple Elliot. greenlit. Respect Elliot, Elliot. Page. Yeah. Did I say, what did I say? Have you seen Elliot Page's abs? No, I don't know anything. Is, today, is today the day you need to see that? I want you to walk away with a happy memory today, okay? Can we please stop? Well, just one picture, Elliot Page's abs. Oh, shit. I don't think Dan's seen this, actually. I don't. We did this on RPR. Need to see <laughs> this. I, you actually do, dude. Wow. Look at your face. <laughs> oh, Boom. Oh, God. Those are nice abs. What I don't know shit. I, I want the abs, uh, dude. I just don't care. I mean, can I, like, you got the skinny joke? I mean, she's like. I mean, come on, as skinny as uh, uh, he is? Yeah, but Frank. look at those abs. Those abs are thick, dude. Those are chunky abs, man. Well, it's the HGH, right? <sighs> is it? Yeah. 
I don't know. Well, I, I want some then. This is fucking <laughs> bullshit, man. Instead, we're giving it to Juno. So this is um, your problem. You're upset fucked up. that he has abs and you don't. That's I want to party with him. Uh, yeah, I'll do some coke off those abs. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> They're raised high enough where you could just do the lining of the abs. And exactly. Snort your way down to Perfect. the pleasure palace. Yes, man. Hell goddamn yeah. right, dude. I could do. You could put up a whole eight ball down there, tell you all the way down to the ding dong. Well, there's no ding dong. Uh, and and Elliot, by the way, if they haven't attached it, you know, and it's you can make fake ones of those. Well, but if you, if you also need no, music. and it, you know, like the ball has the inflate. No, because I, I talked to a nurse Noodle, one time. Yes, literally, who like uh, I dated her or whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, she that was like she worked at a clinic where that's what they did, like yeah. the sex reassignment surgeries. She told me the whole. It's crazy. It's, it's amazing. Crazy. It's actually in, like kind of super. Like you said, the the whole gay discussion. Yeah. I never knew how interesting that whole world could be. Like, it's like the Reebok, the old Reebok pump shoes. She's yeah. like, no, you have an inflatable. I'm like, no. no yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it was very So you could keep them deflated on the, on the reg, and then whenever you're going out yes, to, you, the, to it, the beach, for example. Yeah, D Brown, dude. Yeah. It's just like, you're walking around, people are like, hey, is something wrong? Like, no. Dude, she no, told me this story that one of them, it was, it was a woman who you know, got sexual assignment surgery. This is like 12 years ago, 15 years ago, to a man. And, uh, you know, full penis and then the inflatable sack and the balls. And she got a tattoo of a, an anchor on her penis. And mm -hmm. so the, my, the nurse, I was saying, asked her, like, why? Why did you do that? She goes, oh, so I can drop anchor on my girlfriend. Because oh, I guess the girl was in the Navy before or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine with that. I that's was great. like, okay, that's pretty clever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like that's... I'm, I'm, I'm all in with that. And Elliot Page, <laughs> if you're out there and you need uh, to get cirked, let's say whatever dong they gave you was an uncirked one and you want it cirked. Imagine having I'll to have that conversation cut. with your fucking doctor. Yeah. Like you're, you're looking through, what, a fucking police lineup to pick out a dick you yeah, like? Yeah, you gotta pick out your dick, dude. It's, it's, like, it's like Sky Mall. And yeah, 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 Sky Mall. <laughs> the doctor's like, just bring me a picture of the dick you want, I'll make it. Yeah, yeah. remember in, uh, when you were a kid and like you go into Fantastic Sam's and they have yeah. that book of what yes. hairstyles yeah. look like? But same same with, thing for dunks. I've gone in with at least 10 girls who've gotten fake tits and like, oh yeah, help, help me pick yes. out the yeah, whatever. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 That That's a normal happens. thing. Just being a gentleman. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How do you collect all the pictures though? Like, do you want to, is it, is it the aesthetics of the dick that you're trying to copy or whatever power it's given to the man who possesses it, right? <laughs> Great so question. do you go to someone like, you know, RIP, but Burt Reynolds and be like, I want his dick. And no, matter, no matter what his dick looks like, yeah. I want it on me now. The guy, the neighbor owns his dick though. That's the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not story. trying to get into a licensing agreement with Burt Reynolds' dick right now. Let's, get, let's get, move past it. All I can, right uh, but if we could, and if the, if the estate wants to grant us access to allow us a hologram of Burt's dick during the show, be happy to do that once a week on the show. I'd just have Bert's dick rise up from the ground. And, uh, and I think that would be a lovely thing. Probably be nuked from YouTube, but whatever. Tucker, we appreciate you being here today. Thank you for having me. My man, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, Tuckermax.com. Tuckermax.com. And sure. the name of your company, please. Scribe, oh, there my you go. If you want to help writing your book, scribemedia.com. Scribemedia.com. And yes. I, look, we've, I, Dan and I have had two personal friends do it. Uh, best in the biz, in my opinion. And uh, do you want a job? He pitches better than me, man. Congratulations! I look, we <laughs> this is what we do here on the show, dude. I, I really, we did it. Two two close friends that did it, though. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell Rachel this weekend. We're I think we're supposed to have dinner with her Saturday or Sunday. So we'll see. Uh, for Anthony, Anthony Holloway, Tucker Max, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros Podcast. Get cert.